I guess it's all relative. The like a seven and a half pound um, New Zealand fish is absolutely awesome, of course. But um, you model things down a bit, like some of our small Victorian rivers, which I just love fishing the high country. You're using a six and a half foot rod. Uh, they're just perfect for the smaller streams, and you're targeting smaller fish. And we had that brown that was just rising up there, right near um, in amongst the trees. And uh, as soon as he took, I knew I was in strife because there was a log in front. So you've got to turn that rod sideways. All the thought processes come together and it works out well. Believe me, it doesn't happen well all the time, but that one it did. And that sticks in my mind as one of my, my favourite high country uh, browns for the season. Gav came to a perfect piece of water with good flow and good trout lies on either side. And casting into the slower water on the left of the run, it was no surprise that a brown was tempted out of his lie to eat. But with a serious log jam just downstream, Gav is forced to put the brakes on or face losing the fish to the snags. After coming up and taking the fly, Gav is forced to strike with the rod low to avoid getting caught up in the timber and then recover line quickly as the fish swims straight towards him and those snags. I'll give him a, uh, a way in a small little river like that. On a quarter pound. In a lovely little river. That's, uh, that's not a bad fish. Pretty happy with that one. Sometimes if, if you find that uh, you're casting at fish and they're not taking your fly, you need to change it. When they keep taking it, don't change it. And that one's working all, all the time. So uh, that's a great fish, great fish. Back in. Perfect. Two of the most common questions we get is in relation to knots. Uh, the first one is a nail knot, which ties your leader to your fly line. The other is your tippet to your leader, and that's called a surgeon's knot. So to tie the uh, nail knot, we use a tie fast knot tie combo tool. Makes it so much easier. And uh, it just pulls out there. We exert the fly line into the, the tool itself, and we get the thick end of the, of the leader. And uh, we just place that down the side, and then we go underneath, over the top, and wrap that around. You do about five or six turns, uh, and you get it quite snug. Place the thick end back through that hole that's created uh, by the system in the, um, the knot tool, and then pull that out. They generally come out pretty straight. You might need to fiddle around with it a little bit just to make sure it's all tight. Pull it tight, trim off the ends. It's very important that you do trim off the ends. It's a very snug knot, so that as it goes in and out of your guides, there's less likelihood of it catching and you're going to land that great fish. Now the surgeon's knot is the knot we use to tie the leader to the tippet. So let's pretend um, for this exercise that the, the green is your leader and then we've cut off a little bit of um, tippet, which is the orange. So we put that together and we double that up and make a loop and we simply pull the end of the, the leader and the end of the tippet through and we do that three times. And uh, then we'll wet that and then just pull that tight. And as you can see with that knot in there, you can see how all the weight has spread over the entire length of the knot. So it's a very strong knot and it holds in place really well. So uh, we just trim off those ends as well to make it a nice fine little knot there and that's sure to land your big trophy trout. I guess another fish that really stands out is Christmas Island where it just um, was one of those great times. The wind had calmed off a bit. You spot that bone fish. I think size doesn't even matter. When you're talking bones, good cast, good strip, it hooks up and they just go. And uh, just in a place like that, Christmas Island's amazing. It's just a place you've got to go. And once you start hooking these bones, they just stick in your mind forever. And it's, it's, it's something, again, a highlight for me of the whole of series two. It's been pretty hard going. We've um, 
haven't seen a lot of fish on this particular bit, on this flat here. But English, we've seen, well, we've seen a couple of bigger ones, but haven't been able to hook them up. So uh, it was good to finally uh, see one that wanted to take the fly. Yes, yeah. And that's what you'll find on some other flats, you'll find lots of fish, but smaller. Whereas... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is only a small one, you go that, and they're all smash into the backing anyway, just on those, so uh, even the small bone fish are great. So. English said he was just a, a small one, but that's just three pound of absolute muscle. They're incredible. And you'll see this is where they get all that power from, from this the big fork tail. And uh, I've got that, that the, the mouth there is shaped quite funny. I'll get this hook out and get him back in the water and just, just show you. It's a fly, but it is like on, a, on an angle. So for them to eat, they've got to tilt their uh, head up, his back. They've got to tilt their head up to eat. And that's how good the, the guides are. Like we can see, like I can see it as a blur or a dark green shape. English can actually see them when they tilt their body to eat the fly. Fish on and they've got it in their mouth. So uh, yeah, there's still a lot to learn with this bone fishing, but it's just something, you're just, you're just gonna love it.